Well, on Wednesdays for our members blog portion of the show, I answer emails from listeners looking for advice. And I also sometimes issue corrections to the bad advice offered by people on other forums, especially uh, TikTok. And the bad advice videos are curated by my producer McKenna and sent to me, uh, at which point I uh, go through them all. And, and that's when I become depressed and disgusted and, and the light inside me dies a little more. But at least it makes good content. And that's how the creative process works. But yesterday, uh, I was sent one bad advice video that is so bad in which I found so viscerally abhorrent and repulsive that it, it immediately graduated from members block fodder to the daily cancellation. This, of course, is the greatest honor I can bestow on a terrible person. And we have a very terrible person for today's segment. Jessica Ashley bills herself as a divorce coach. This is apparently an actual industry that exists in our country. After a brief Google search, I discovered there are many divorce coaches and divorce consultants charging exorbitant hourly rates to encourage and facilitate the dissolution of marriages. Um, divorce coaches should not be confused with divorce lawyers. These are two different species of blood-sucking parasites. Think of one as kind of like a deer tick and the other is a dog tick. And even the ticks have ticks, as there are now many pricey online certification programs offered for those who want to become certified in the field of divorce coaching. So if you wish to be a certified a certifier of a certified divorce coach, then you get, then you have to do that. If you want to be a certifier of people who are certifying divorce coaches, there are probably different programs for that. And if you want to coach people who certify the people who certify the people who are divorce coaches, again, there is, I assume, a program for that. One thing we've learned about the modern modern culture is that for every evil, for every brand of misery, there are a million vultures circling, looking for you know, a way to make a fast buck on someone else's poor life choices. In fact, there is so much misery and so many soulless profiteers trying to monetize it that it becomes a kind of parasitic infinite regress. And somewhere in this garbage heap lies Jessica Ashley, who offers three-month and six-month divorce subscription services. Uh, she's also on call, by the way, ready for her phone or FaceTime consultations for anyone desperate and stupid enough to pay the money for it. And sorry, fellas, I got to tell you, she does stipulate that she is a divorce coach for moms specifically. Her website tagline is, a mom's best girlfriend in divorce. Though I strongly suspect that the market for divorce coaches consists almost entirely of women anyway. It's like if the cupcake wine company stipulated that it was just for women. You know, it's already kind of implied by the nature of the product. But uh, Jessica has developed a relatively sizable social media following, consisting entirely of the sorts of women who have been, you know, would have been probably tried and convicted of witchcraft if they'd been born in a different era. Uh, these are women who, who can't get enough of this kind of stuff. Listen. The very best piece of advice I've ever received about divorce came in the early days of my own divorce from a friend who'd never been divorced and in fact wasn't even married at the time. She said something so powerful, ugh, it really got in there and it still rings true today and I share it with my divorce coaching clients often. Here's the best piece of divorce advice I've ever heard. Your life is bigger than one man. Let's extend it. Your life is bigger than one relationship, one marriage, one moment in time. Even if that relationship comes with good intentions and oodles of love and big dreams and a home and kids and memories and vacations, what happens if you release your grasp that this relationship defines the whole of you and the whole of your life to see what could come next, what is happening now? There was a time before this relationship. You you are heading into the next part. What are the possibilities that extend far beyond this one person? Now, the people in the comment section are absolutely blown away by these platitudes that Jessica plagiarized from the slogans on inspirational keychains at a gift shop somewhere. She's like some kind of feminist bumper sticker. And yet, many of the com commenters claim that they were reduced to tears by Jessica's recitation of modernist cliches. One woman said that the video had saved her life. Which is, which is like having your life saved by a fortune cookie. Worst of all, the cliches aren't true. Because if you are betraying your vows and dismantling your marriage and running out on your husband and hurting your children in pursuit of your own personal happiness, you are not bigger than the moment. Um, there are moments in life that make us who we are. Moments that tell us and tell the world who we really are. And if you're following Jessica Ashley's advice, then you will answer that moment by announcing yourself to be a disloyal, self-centered, shallow, superficial narcissist. You are not bigger than the moment. You are defined by it. The whole point of marriage is that two become one. And when you say, I do to your spouse, you are entering into something that is bigger than you. And from this union springs a family and children and a whole life that you could never live on your own. You're not bigger than that. 
If, if you shrink away from that commitment, that, 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 uh, that sacred institution that you've entered into, it's not because you're bigger than it, but because you are smaller than it. You are too small, too hollow to grasp the happiness that can be found in loyalty and fidelity to your family. In the same way, if you visit the Sistine Chapel and you find that you're bored or unimpressed by the site, it's not because you're too significant or too big to appreciate it, right? It's because you're, you're, you're such a small-minded, brain-dead idiot that you can't recognize beauty when you're standing in its presence. That's why none of the divorced cat ladies who pay Jessica for, for her consultations will go on to achieve great things or contribute to the world in any important way. None of them will. Now, they say that they, they're getting they're, they're divorced and they're free now and they can go out into the world and do all these impressive things. They're not going to do anything. Instead, they'll wind up dating a bunch of pathetic men desperate enough to see them as romantic options, and they'll argue with their ex-husbands, and they'll watch a lot of TV, and they'll be promoted to middle management, and they'll make uh, you know, $140,000 a year, and they'll feel very accomplished, and they'll spend their money on consumer products and cat food, and they'll tell themselves a story about the journey they've been on, but that journey will be about as interesting and unique as a Hallmark greeting card. Less interesting, actually, because at least a Hallmark card is something that you buy to express gratitude towards some other person in your life. But the women who listen to Jessica Ashley are far more focused on expressing gratitude towards themselves. They are collapsing into themselves, sucked into the vortex of their own egos, the human equivalent of dying stars, slowly evolving into black holes. Except that, you know, entire galaxies really do revolve around actual black holes. In the case of these women, that's how they see themselves, but it's not the reality. Now, Jessica has more wisdom to offer, though. In another video, she tries to explain why men might change during the course of a marriage. Here's her theory. Have you ever asked why your husband is radically changed? Why he seems like a completely different person than he was in the early days of marriage, before kids or maybe even before you got married? Have you looked back over the last few years with a fine tooth comb at everything said and done, looking for the perfect clue, an incident or event that will help bring rationale to why he has turned so hateful in his words and action when you entered into this union with such love? Have you desperately sought out the perfect perfect things for you to say or do that will get this marriage back on track, that will get him back on track, that will maybe be the cure, marriage counseling or a couple's retreat or maybe a change in meds. Now, certainly trauma, grief, mental health issues, illness, injury, so many things can cause us to be and act totally differently. But sometimes people's masks get too heavy and they fall off and they reveal who they really are. Now, sure, okay, that might be true in some cases. There are some men who essentially dupe their wives into marriage, sociopaths who hide their true nature, their true selves. Uh, there are women who do this also. You know, that, that can happen in a marriage. But if you're a woman whose husband seems to have grown miserable and angry during the course of your marriage, you should also consider the very real possibility that he has become that sort of man in response to the sort of woman you are. Um, you should at least consider that possibility. That is, a, that is a potential explanation that you must take into account. And if you're the sort of woman who, who is inclined to seek counsel from a cliche-spewing divorce coach on TikTok, it seems rather likely that your miserable, angry, quote, hateful husband has been broken down by years spent trying to please the shallow, egotistical wench he married. Again, I'm obviously not saying this is always the case. I'm simply saying that it's a possibility you have to take into consideration. Because as men, you know, we very much want our wives to support us, to be proud of us. Um, we, we might not express that desire out loud. In fact, we probably will never say that. We aren't gener generally very adept at vocalizing those kinds of emotions and desires. But when a man comes home from, his, from work and, you know, his wife gives him a kiss and says, hi, honey, I'm so glad you're home. Or, you know, when, when his wife comes up to him, at the blue and says that she's, she's proud of him and grateful how, for how hard he works. Um, something like that, that, that man will immediately be on cloud nine. He will feel appreciated and respected and loved. This is what women need to understand about men. You don't need to give us very much to make us happy. We just need your affection. We, and, and we'll never tell you that. We'll never verbalize it. But that's what we need. That's what we want. We, we actually want to feel appreciated and loved by our wives, if you can believe it. That's, that's something that men in a marriage really want. Um, let, me, let, me give you, let me give you a secret. Here's the cheat code. This is what every man wants. Okay, this, this, is, this is how you make him happy. 
He wants to walk in the door after work, and his children run up to him and say, hi, daddy, and they give him a hug. And his wife comes over and smiles and kisses him. Dinner's on the stove. Everyone is happy and glad to see him. I mean, and that, that's all. It, it really is as simple as that. That's, that's, if a man has that, he has almost everything he needs in the world. Of course not. It can't be like that every day. And every family is different. Every situation is different. Uh, it might be a situation where maybe both spouses have to work, especially in this economy. Uh, maybe the man works a different shift, so he's not really coming home at dinner time anyway. My point is simply to convey to you how easy it is to make a man happy, how simple our desires actually are, how comparatively little we actually want, um, how love and affection and gratitude are the things that we really need in our marriage. So if your husband seems bitter and angry, you might consider whether you have given him any of those things any time recently or at all. Or you could just assume that he's a sociopathic monster who was wearing a mask and only let it slip after years of marriage. That could be the case. But if you assume it's the case, there's probably a rather self-serving reason for that. That's what divorce coach Jessica Ashley isn't going to tell you, and it's why she is today canceled.